Oh, what? Awesome. Two, one, you're live. You're live. You're live. Instagram, what's up? Hello, We're, hello. Uh, we up on YouTube as well? Yeah. Welcome back. Another European Watch Company Horological Happy Hour. Thank We're back. Thank you everyone for joining us. We're just getting everything up and live right now. All right. We're here. We're good. Everything We're here. Be We're good. Excellent. We're talking about dual time watches. I've yes. requested. Somebody let me in. All right. All right. So as Rob said, this week we are going to focus on um, dual time and dual time watches and GMTs, uh, travel time watches. We had so many options to choose from that um, we, we good. Um, we 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 picked I think like eight watches to talk about. There we could have had you know two dozen. Um, so we're gonna try and hit as many as we can. If there are ones that you guys want to see that we're you know we don't get to or you know you want to make sure we talk about, throw a comment in the chat in either our Instagram or the uh, the YouTube live, and we'll do our best to make sure that that we get to those. Um, Henry Lee, it's good to see you too. Thank you for joining us. And we have Tommy Sommer asking for a wrist check. Oh, cool. All right. Let's start with, all right. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna make. We're gonna make this a true happy oh. hour. Oh. Yes, make it happy. There you go. And then we'll, while Rob is opening his, we'll uh, we'll do a little wrist check. Uh, we decided to go with the uh, the classic Guinness this week. You know, it's, it's cold. cold. It's cold, Cheers, right? Buddy. Warmth from. Cheers, everybody. The stout. All right. So wrist check. Quick wrist check. Uh, I'm wearing my my AP Royal Oak. Which you have made a recent discovery on, by the way. I think it's <laughs> worth noting. So I've I've owned this watch for. Seven years now, almost seven years now. Wow! And uh, for the longest time, I thought it was a fourteen seven. Do you want me to throw that up over here sure. for the uh, the good people of the internet? Yeah, I um I never measured it or anything. I never really looked at it. I mean, whatever. I looked at it closely, but recently I I thought about trading this and getting into something else, and I decided that I couldn't let it go. And uh, oh, we get it, we get it. Why there is, you go. There it is. And um. As I was, de you know, deciding whether I wanted to get rid of it or not, I realized that it's not a fourteen seven ninety; it's actually a forty one hundred ST. So it's an it's a, it's an earlier piece, um, but huge super fan. slim. Yep, so nice. The bracelet the is time. like it's wonderful. Yeah, what do you I got on that. today? So I am wearing. I've taken it off so that I can demo the watches here, but I've got my Paddock Trapeze. This is the reference fifty. Four eighty nine, and it's kind of an odd duck, but it's one that's been very near and dear to my heart for, man, five years now. I don't know how long I've had this. Solid case back, manual wind movement, um, asymmetric, and it looks like an old watch, but it's actually two thousand ten. So super cool piece. That's yeah. like we we talked about it a million times. Rob and I both love non round watches. That's a great piece. Super yeah. super cool. Um, all right, so dual times, GMTs. Um, do we want to talk a little bit off the top about what the difference between, or first of all, what a GMT, what a dual time is, what the difference is between those two? Yeah, I mean, we often take for granted that everybody just knows this stuff because that's what we do all day, every day, right? Yeah. But I think, I think it's always good to kind of go over the basics and like, what is GMT? What does that mean? So... Greenwich Mean Time. Thank you. Rick. Greenwich in England, yep. which is where the prime meridian is. Correct. Right, yep. and so that was that was like zero hour basically. So a lot of uh, airplane communication, right? So like all, air traffic control, all, all air traffic that is done on GMT. In GMT. Correct. And you know you'll see like you know Boston and New York is GMT minus five, so we're five hours behind Greenwich Mean Time. It's just a universal way of of communicating about the time um, and a GMT allows you to track two time zones. Um, it originated, the name comes from Pat, um, Rolex in the 50s with Pan Am. Um, I was about to say, we can use this as kind of our demo, but maybe that's where we should start. Because yeah. I think that the Rolex GMT might be the beginning, it right? Was. It was. There, there really wasn't, I, don't, I guess the world timers though, right? Because the Paddock world timers go back farther but that's different that that is not so here you go so show Pat. so here we're, we're gonna we're gonna talk about you know to start we'll go with this um the the sprite gmt so it's the you know the left hander the destro whatever you want to call it debuted last year um yes. and you know so as you can see on the piece you have you know hours minutes you have a second hand and then you have a third um a third or fourth actually hand that 
which in this case it's over here right now. Yep. In this one it's green. Um, in some of the other ones it's red. In some of them it's blue, depending mm -hmm. upon which iteration you have. But yeah, you have a fourth hand on these. So using the that hand and the 24-hour bezel, which actually can be rotated so you can actually track a third time zone, but um, using the bezel and that hand, you can set it so you, you can track the time zone, say, in London and you know the time here. So right now it's about 5 p.m., uh, Boston time, London, it's 10 p.m. So you would set, you know, set the watch accordingly and then, you know, you're all set. Then as the, as the hands advance around the dial, you're able to track both time zones. The original GMT did not have an independently set hour hand. Um, you simply rotated the bezel to set your GMT. And with the original application being for pilots, it wasn't the kind of thing where it was like, oh, I want to track Boston time and LA time. Mm -hmm. This was about, I need GMT time and then whatever my local thing was. So they would use the bezel so that they could keep track of GMT and then set the hands to their local time. Right. Now, with modern movement technology, we have this independent hour hand and we can actually, you can set this to be whatever you want it to be, right. which is very cool. And then yeah. if you use the bezel, you could even kind of get like a third, you can get a third time zone in there. But, it gets very, it but gets very that's, that's more but. than my tiny brain can handle. <laughs> Agreed, yeah. um, so anyway, so nine, I believe it was what, 54 was when the 6542 was released? Oh, I don't remember the year. That sounds internet, right. Internet, correct me if I'm wrong. but I Or producer was, Craig. It was sometime in the 50s. Rolex um, 6542, original GMT release. Um, cool vintage watch. Gorgeous. And this is yeah. interesting because this watch follows on in that tradition, but like, I don't know where this left-handed thing came from. I 54. felt like this was, it is 54. I, wow. I know things. You actually know your stuff. I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Thanks. I don't know where this left-handed thing came from, though. I'm not sure it's either. so bizarre. Um, looks great on the Jubilee. Yep. It's really good. It's a weird one to wear. This is like yeah. one of the few watches where I'd actually have to adjust to wearing it just because of the date and the crown on the other side. Right, right. I, st I still kind of feel like my watch is upside down. It makes, yeah, it, it kind of scrambles my brain when I put it on my wrist. Um, it just doesn't, whatever. It doesn't work. Jubilee or Oyster? Cool. What say you, people of the internet? Jubilee. I'm I'm Team Jubilee. Although on the Batman, I'd go Oyster. Eh, whatever. On the Batman Oyster. You're wrong, on this one, Jubilee. <laughs> so an interesting left field GMT mm -hmm. from Rolex. Let's now go for a very interesting left field oh, wait. watch. Oh, wait. 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 I think we should talk about a dual time. Right. If we're gonna talk about GMTs and dual times, let's go GMT and then talk about what is what specifically makes it so, a dual yeah, time. So, yeah, tell, tell me your distinction here, because so, I, I would think of the two in the same category. I would think a GMT is a dual time as a GMT. They do the same thing, but they do it in different ways. Okay. So with a GMT, you have this additional hand that you set, mm -hmm. you know, using the 24-hour, um, the, the, the GMT hand only goes around, it's, it's a 24-hour it's a hand. Right, so you, it's slow. Correct. So a dual time actually has two 12-hour registers on it. That is the very slight distinction. Mm. It just, it does, again, it does the same thing, just in a different way. So, should we put this up? Let's go, let's go with the overseas, because that is, I feel like that's a more... We can do that. You know, that Cartier is crazy. That's, that's almost, that's almost, <laughs> that's something totally different. So there's the tease, everybody. Um, Cartier craziness coming up later. All right, I'm going to switch this over, and we are going to the Vacheron Constantin overseas dual time yep. and this is the most current reference this is the 7900 v um in this case we have it here in the blue dial but also available in black and silver and this was the first one they did with an in-house movement correct um previous to this if you see older overseas dual times or even i think they did like a multi-dual time or something like that and that was using the um jaeger master geographic movement okay back then which is a great movement. Um, not a rip on Vacheron at all, just stating the facts. Um, this movement, I anyway, I'll get there later. Sorry, I, I was about to dig right into the into the spiciness, but we'll get there later. So this is this is a uh, an interesting take on the dual time because you have. I keep losing focus on my on my close up camera, David. I don't know if you can help us with that. Um, this one, you have your hours and your minutes, and then you have your second time zone hand over here. And because you don't have the 24 hour indication like you do on the Rolex, you have an AM PM indicator here on the side. And I'm gonna try to do this while on camera. And Justin can judge how successful I am. <laughs> if, I, if I roll this forward, 
at some point, there it is. You'll there see you that start to move yep. and then it clicks over and now it's telling me, obviously in your home time zone, like the main hands, you can look outside and say it's dark or it's light and you know if it's AM or PM. Um, but for your second time zone, this guy on the side here tells you where you are and then you have a pointer date at the bottom. Um, and then uh, the one thing I find really bizarre about this watch is that the button is for the date. Yeah. The the button should be for the dual time. I know. No? Yeah. The, the button should be for the dual time. Well, that's time. another thing we can talk about. How you know, all you know, every brand does their setting mechanisms slightly different, and there are some that are much better than others. And you know, like we're gonna get to it, the Paddock fifty one sixty four, which is, like is the, the best, the easiest, most the simple, best. simplest setting um, yeah. when it comes to travel time. But you're right. I mean, it, why do you care? Like, why do you need a quick set date? Like, but it's it's a on. it's a great fit on the wrist. Um, and I really like the strap changing options. The fact that you can, without tools. I think we've talked about this. Yeah. It's yeah. So easy you now. just went, and even the deploy yep. is done without tools to put it on the rubber or the leather. Right. So you buy one of these, you get a super useful watch and again, with a lot like, of versatility. Un un unlike you know earlier efforts, you know IWC uh, on the quick change straps, these actually clip in and they actually stay clipped in. They don't just fall off of your wrist yes. like some of the old ones. Yeah, right? these so. and these have been out since what, 2019 or something like that? Because uh, these were pre-pandemic. Yeah, it was just before. So yeah, it um, was this was like, I feel like this might even be early 2019 or yeah. something like that, but um, we haven't had any issues with them or, no. you know, failures on that in that no, respect. So it works really well. You they get micro really just nice on the bracelet. You get the same blue dial as you get on a chronometer blue which is pretty insane if you think about it um that baked glossy blue enamel which the camera's not going to get it but it's, it's a stunner deep, yeah, trust it's me it's really pretty uh so a cu couple couple of comments here oh good no neither of us are michael justin and robert that's okay wait wait somebody asked sure yeah are, uh, uh, this could be an identity I'm, I'm crisis double, double, double. <laughs> <laughs> uh david juarez asked where's amy She's not here today. Sorry. Uh, and yeah, Henry uh, mentioning the fifty nine ninety. Agreed. Super easy to set. Exact same thing as the as the fifty one sixty four. So well, they they built on that movement, right? right. I think it's a sixty four movement with the chrono. Right. Added, added to the module. Yeah. Right. So why don't we go to that next? Actually, we can do that since we're talking about steel sport watch GMTs. Um, I'm gonna actually make the hands pretty on this one because I didn't on the last one. This is probably my favorite of the bunch if we're talking about. Um, like the sporty mm -hmm. GMT, like from a from a super top tier manufacturer. Like not thinking about the Rolex GMT. I, 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 think, I think I think it's very hard to do better than a fifty one sixty four. If you're looking for a travel time or some kind of you know dual time zone um, functionality from your high end sports watch, what is better than this? So I this mean, one, according to your definition, this would be a dual time, correct, right? Correct. Because we have our main time zone. You have a skeletonized hour hand for your second time zone, and we have dual AM and PM indicators right. on this one. Right. So you'll then you could be in your cave on Mars <laughs> and know if it's AM or PM in the home time. As more well. more likely, like you know, in the movie theater on my yacht off the coast of Pocatano, <laughs> but it's okay. So um, and the other thing I like about this is if you're not traveling, you can actually make this look like a simple three-hander, which yep. I really like. So using these two buttons, which are ever so elegantly designed right into the case there, you can move your hour hand around. So like right now I've got this where it's like, you know, just about 10 minutes to four in the daytime. I'm traveling to LA. I need to back it out three hours. I go one, two, three, and then, it, or I went ahead three hours, sorry. Um, if I want to go backwards, it's this way. One, two, three. Well, so I now I was gonna say, actually, the beauty of this as well is that you can go backwards or forwards with this movement. And yes, that, you know what I mean. It's it's totally fine. You're not, You're not gonna, gonna break, break anything. anything which is great. Um, and so now I've got like my you know five minutes to one in LA, five minutes to four back in Boston, and you know which is which. Again, you've got the pointer date at the bottom, which to me gives the dial great symmetry. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I'd ever look at it for the date, but I, aesthetically the, I like it's it. It's not the easiest to read, but I agree. Aesthetically, it balances the dial. I mean, you know, it's... Look at that. It looks good with a suit. looks good with t-shirt and shorts. Like, I love this it's watch. Perfect. It's great on the green strap, which, yeah. of course, you can't get unless you've got, like, five grand or something ridiculous like <laughs> it's that. It's totally but, worth it, though. But it, it's... I... There was a time I thought I would one day get into one of these, but they've out, outpaced me on the price, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, I think this one we have listed for 87.5 right yeah. now. Retails around 40, so... 
So hot take, I would take this over the Chrono. I would take this over, over the 59, 68. 68. I think I would too, honestly. I, I love the usability of this. I like the size better because it's a little bit slimmer. Mm -hmm. um, again, this goes under the cuff. You could be discreet if it's you like needed to. It's, it's, it's you very don't have a ridiculous orange wear. strap. <laughs> yeah, but you can put, like, you can put the, that on a, you know, a black strap or whatever. But I, honestly, if it's, if it's travel time versus a Chrono, I'm going to pick the travel time. It's just more useful. Yeah. You know, I mean, honestly, like we all have people, whether it's, you know, you know, coworkers that work on, in different time zones or family or whatever it is. And it's just like, it's nice to be able to, you know, look at your watch and you know that, oh, you know, whatever, the office in LA, like I shouldn't call them right now because it's, you know, 7 a.m. Right. or whatever. You know what I mean? It's just... I'm, I think I, I woke I, up a customer in Australia once, not knowing <laughs> it, but but they asked me to call them. So. There you go. Um, all right, you pick where we're going to go next. All right, so we're talking paddock. Let's pull out what I think is kind of one of the more interesting watches that we have yeah, today. I agree. Which is the reference I'm going to get wrong. Um, <laughs> Would you like me to tell you what the reference is? Because I've gotten it wrong a few times this on our the, spreadsheet. I this screwed is it the, up. the 5224, brand new model for 2023. Um, this is a Calatrava 24-hour dial uh, travel time. I think that's what they call it, correct? And leading off with the rose gold blue, which yes. to me was wild to say, hey, here's the first version of this brand new watch with a brand new caliber. Yep. And we're going to start with a rose gold case blue dial. So which... this, this is also another one that just kind of breaks my brain. Like I haven't had enough time to, to play with it yet. But so it's a 24 hour dial. So you have to retrain your brain. You can't just easily look at the watch and know, OK, cool. I know exactly what time it is because hey, the hands only go around the dial once every 24 hours. So you're basically you're telling time in military time. Yep. And we have again, we have the skeletonized hour hand here for the uh, dual time feature. So you could have this be a typical three-hander. No date on this one, which is fine. Nobody needs it anyway. Um, you've got a running small seconds, which again, I think gives really nice balance to the dial. If it didn't have that, if it had a center seconds, I feel like it'd feel a little barren. So you can, um, be confusing if it had you can hide this or you can display it. And it has the clickable hour hand very much like a Rolex GMT. So it's going around in the one hour increments. And then just to kind of show, let me get this synced up again. If I pull out the crown and start moving the hands around, that hour hand is like creeping around the dial. Right. So we've currently now, if I put it like this, if you were to glance at this quickly, you would think it's like... 8 p.m. or 8 o'clock, whatever. Right, coming up on 9 p.m., but it's actually, it actually 5 a.m. Oh, see? I have no idea what time it is. Yeah, you got <laughs> You got to read it. But it's, um, so it's very. I, I find this model very interesting and fairly unusual for Paddock. You know, you have kind of that. So it's a forty-two millimeter case, so it's on the larger side. But it's you thin. Have those, it is very. It's thin, thin so it, it's okay. Right. Not. Yeah. It's okay. It also has those that kind of Art Deco style stepped lugs, and then you know you have twenty-four. You know the twenty-four hour dial. You know with. Fully loomed Arabic numerals. Um, oh, that numerals loom too. Oh yeah, because oh, you yeah. definitely have loom in the syringe hands, and you have a good amount. I bet this actually glows. Oh yeah, I think we have a. Uh, here we go, right here. Um, but so just you know, it's it's a it's a fairly here you go, uh, fairly interesting design from Paddock. Fairly Whoa, unusual. Look at that. Right. I mean, it's pretty. There's pretty a lot impressive. of loom there. Once again, I I don't know how effective this is on the internet world, but <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. You can see. There you it. go. It's all green. Look at that. That's a lot of loom. You might even see that at night. Because a lot of dress watch loom is kind of, eh, you know, it's it's not great. There you go. Ooh. There we go. There we go. Setting dim, the mood for lights. us there, David. But, yeah. So, I yeah. mean, again, That's just, decent loom. it's a really interesting combination That's decent of, loom. you know, what Paddock has been doing. You know, the kind of pulls some of the pilot line, you know, with, the, with those large Arabic numerals that are, you know, fully loomed. But it's still super but elegant. But it pulls from that uh, 5320... Mm -hmm. 5172 as well with right. the uh, the syringe and all of that. Right. I was going to say, you pair that with the syringe hands, the, the 42 mil, you know, the very thin case. It's just a very interesting combination of, of a lot of the things that Paddock has been doing, um, you know, over the past five or so years. And I think it's super successful. It works I like really the font well. for the numbers. I think, Your, I think uh, it's very cool. You might want to switch that if you're showing that off. But yeah, no, it's very cool. Sorry, yeah. I, don't, I don't mean to tell you how to do your job over no, there. No, okay. I was just putting something on the split screen so that they're not just staring mm. into the blue void there. There you go. Um, but a cool, a cool release, and I believe already on hold. That one is on hold. Yes, right. I'm working with someone on that. Yeah, um, not surprised. 
So we have it listed for 64.9. MSRP is, I think, just under 60. So, you know, really, really nice piece. And also, did you show the movement? The movement is beautiful. Just one more time. I don't have the details on the... the, the this looks mo like code, this but. comes from the uh, the 5235 regulator and the 5236 inline perpetual. Yes. This is like that family because you've got those three bridges over yep. here for the running train and you've got the, the micro rotor, which I'm guessing is like white gold or platinum. I think they usually use platinum, don't they? Because that's, that's a white metal in there. Um, but yeah, and that's why I think you get this beautifully slim case with a lot of contour and stuff like... That movement fits in there really well. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan. I, I really, really like that piece. Yeah, cool. Okay, sorry. I'm uh, That's trying okay. to see if I can find details on that movement. But any questions? Really, so. Any any uh, comments? Yeah. Um, so, let's see. So, Brizuben, Brizuben. Brizuben uh, mentioned the Breguet 3050, which is a perpetual, is it not? I, I was going to pull out my phone and look it up, but my phone is over here. Yeah, I'll look it up real quick. He said it's more beautiful and more complicated and less expensive. Oh, yeah. So that, yeah, more complicated. Breguet right. is often a really good value. Yeah, we're um, about that, And we have something that kind of sits within that camp um, yeah. of that. We actually have a couple of value things here today, I think, Why don't um, we go to one of those that are worth time? showing. Um, um, where do we go? I guess we go to the valley. Let's go to the valley. Okay. Um... For those of you who don't know, um, you know, most of the manufacturers are in Geneva and, and then the manufacturers who are out in the valley would be like these folks here, Blanc Pan. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. Appreciate it. So I believe this is a Villaray, right? This is a Villaray dual Villaray time. This is a Villaray GMT. So this is an, actually a GMT and an alarm. Um, so oh, yeah. I'm setting the alarm with the bottom go. one. I'm going to use the top ones here to actually move the hands around here. And this is this is a stunner, man. This so, is like there's a lot of cool stuff going on there's here. There's a lot going on, and it's an incredible value for for the amount. So again, this is a um, you know Blancpain, you know incredibly historic manufacturer, um, you know gorgeous movement, really really nice case. You know it it, it it's very classic. Uh, but then you get a GMT and you get an alarm. You know so you get you know compound complications, and we've listed for fourteen six right now. Wow. So, you know, yeah, exactly. Just a crazy value. It is stainless steel, um, but honestly, like, I'm a, I'm a big fan of steel, steel Blanc Pond. Mm -hmm. uh, wind, wind up that, uh, that alarm so we can... Uh, I can do that. Trigger yeah, off that alarm. Yeah. So, on this watch, we've got this super cool serpentine GMT hand. And then you have... The alarm is actually the tiny sub-dial off to the side. And I will show you guys this stuff again once I've got this So it's funny, set. actually. You know, when, when we initially were putting together the list of watches that we were going to have out, um, we didn't include this one. And then one of our colleagues brought it over and was like, hey, what do, what do you think about this one? And I looked at it at first and I was like, oh, you know, I forgot about that. And I initially thought it was a dual time because you have that that secondary dial for the alarm over at three o'clock right um but it, it's not it's actually a gmt that is that is the alarm indicator so over there. this is the alarm so i currently have the alarm set for three o'clock and then this lovely serpentine hand here is your gmt hand which is pretty cool and then you have a date you have a power reserve and you have an indicator as to whether your alarm is on or not so if i push this button you'll see i believe it's a it's a bell on this one. Sometimes yeah, it's a music it. note. Um, in this case, it's a little bell. So that bell is on saying that this alarm is now active. So I'm going to take the hands, which is, uh, which crown is it? Top crown. And I'm going to move the hands here to 3 o'clock. And there it goes. See if you can see that hammer striking away in the back there. <laughs> Basically having a little seizure. Put it right up to your mic if you can, Rob. That's right. Um, I mean, Henry said same complication from Paddock will run you, you know, 200 grand plus. And he's, yes, he's, it would. He's, he's totally right. Although know? that Paddock alarm is a different beast. That uh, is 55 a 5520. That 5520, that's an alarm that sounds like a repeater. Well, like, because it's set up as a repeater, essentially, with, with hammer and gongs, as opposed yeah. to just a, you know, a, a Memovox style alarm. Exactly. You know? That's not like the brrr that we get with this no. one. It, it's, it's like, like a ding, chime. ding, yeah. ding. And yeah. it's like incredibly clear. Like that's, that's a different echelon of watch Completely. at that point. But again, at sub 15 K. Like, oh, it's killer. It's and an it's, unbelievable it's, watch. it's more complex than a Memovox. Mm -hmm. And it's, 
maybe even thinner. I think this is a thinner case because those memo boxes get a little chunky. And this does have some thickness it to does. it. It's not like super duper felt, but for what it is and for a dual time with a date and an alarm and an automatic, I think it's pretty fair. And I think, I think honestly, just the, the design, the, the that serpentine hand, you know, those, those very slim Roman numerals around, you know, which are applied, the dial applied, beautiful applied Romans. It's just a very unique looking piece um, that, you know, you just don't see anything like it, really. It's a it's a nope. very cool combination of, of, of complications and, you know, a fairly unusual um, yeah. piece from a, you know, a Spring loaded deploy that is really phenomenal. I feel like we have, um, we're gonna have to do a, an episode about a like deploy our, shootout. Our, our, our favorite, our favorite clasps or something. But yeah, no, this one's excellent. It you know it, it reminds me of like the um, the the Richard Mille uh, deploys. You know, with oh that. they ripped it off of Blanc Pan hundred <laughs> percent. Well, they, it has yeah, it has that tensioned blade because it's in it, exactly the same. Like this is like a piece of spring steel here. Yeah, and then as you go in, it's like this, and you because it's a butterfly like that, you can use it with a standard length strap. If you have a single fold deploy like a Paddock or the older Jaeger deploys, you need to get the right length strap because otherwise the deploy ends up all the right. way up on the side of the right. wrist and all That's, that. Yeah, I always have that issue. Um, all right, cool. Why don't we do? Let's go. Let's go this route. We can do that because totally different. Mm -hmm. Skews more. I mean, this is kind of again like another weird in between. You know, it, it is. Yeah. So this and the Jaeger Master Geographic. So mm -hmm. the this that we're talking about is the Lang and Sohn Longa One Time Zone. Yes. This is and the reference one three six dot two nine. The updated version that came out in I believe twenty twenty. This is the newest one. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, with the updated features. Um, so the the Longa Time Zone and the Master Geographic are two watches that kind of make you think they're a world timer because they put all the cities on there, but it's not a world timer by the true definition of it. This right. is a dual time. Right. Because it only shows you two time zones at one time. Right. Whereas in a world timer, which we didn't bring today, that might be another, mm -hmm. another show, um, the world timer shows you all 24 time zones simultaneously. Right, which is insane. Yeah. The hard part about those, like trying to do a show like this, is Paddock, mm -hmm. Vacheron, mm -hmm. and who else? True world timer? Yeah. Paddock, Vacheron. Who else makes a true world timer? That's a good question. While the smoke comes out of your ears, I'm gonna. <laughs> as, as, as the internet watches the gears this. in my head turn. There, there is, there is a Jaeger World Time Memovox with a black dial. That's kind of a rare watch. We've sold it a few times, but but I don't think they have a World Time in their standard I don't production. Would, right? I don't think they do though in their in their standard catalog. No. Who else? Because there's that does Patrimony else? World Time. There's help us, people of yeah, the anybody. internet. Uh, Chime in. Frederick Constant. Frederick Constant makes a World Time. Do they? No one yeah, they do. <laughs> they do. No, no one cares. Shade has been thrown. So, back to the Longa. This is in the, uh, like, the Grand Longa 1 case. So, this is, like, a 42-millimeter case, which, of course, they they make in extremely specific, and they say that it's, like, 41.758 or something 41. like that. 41.9, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's a 42 mil case. It's not super thick. It's, you know, it's a good thickness. It's super wearable. Um, I so really like this black dial. Sorry, white we're, gold. We're, we're idiots. There's the Aqua Terror, so Omega, the Aqua Terror yeah. World Timer. Oh, yeah. There's that new Bulgari, which we've actually played with and I think shown on one of these before, the Octa Roma World Timer. We have one right now. We I do think. have one right now. Uh, obviously, Paddock. There's the Paddock. My computer's being slow. No one IWC about Time that. Zoner. The IWC, IWC Time Zoner. That's is actually, that a true World Time or is that a, yeah. a fakey no, uh, has, dual time always, with all the cities? No, it it the, yeah, it definitely is. That's a good piece. I like that watch. Um, I I starting to fight. <laughs> I'm starting to fight. I think that's a dual time. I think that's the same as this Longa or the uh, the Jaeger. Overseas. World time? Yes. Well, yeah. We mentioned we Vacheron because yeah, they do that back. same movement in a Patrimony and they do it in, in right. an overseas. That one's not great. Um, but that's one of the only ones that does the half hour time zones. Like that gives you, because yeah. I think, isn't it India? India, India has, has like one four or, or two, five yeah. half hour time yeah, yeah, zones. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, uh, yeah. there's a couple other weird ones too. There's even some quarter hour. Richard like, Neal, 3602 world timer. I don't even know what that looks like. Jeez. 
Oh, we've sold that. Of course we know what that is. We've we had have that many sold times. Those. All right, anyways, this so is there you super, go. super uh, riveting TV. Yeah. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, Cosmo Pack mentions Grubel does as well. You're correct. Yes, yeah. So yeah. We don't see many of those, unfortunately. But, um, but so with the Longa now, um, I, I thought this was super clever because they made really good use of their Longa 1 dial mm -hmm. and then you know you keep your main hours and minutes here but then you add instead of a small seconds here like you would have on a standard longer one you add a second time zone right. um your small seconds gets moved to an extremely small sub dial in the hours here and then yeah. with the new one you have the day night indicators at the center of each thing so again you have dual day night indicators um and with this one we have two buttons on the side here and these allow you to switch your time zones around. Oh, wait, sorry. One of no, them is so the top, hour. The top pusher is for the big date. Top the one low, is for the, the big date. The lower pusher is to advance, you know, to advance And the that, bottom that one moves your city disc city and ring. changes, there we go, also, and changes the, uh, the bottom. Fun fact, I had to look it up because I had no idea. That tiny little red and white indicator in the, um, that subsidiary dial down at like know. 4 o'clock. I, I don't know if you'll this. be able to show it. It is. There so, you go. Oh, you're getting it. You're getting it. You I've lost you, my focus you, you, here. You have to be centered, but it's okay. Anyways, there's a very small aperture in that subdial um, down at about 4 o'clock that's, like, arrow-shaped. And I was trying to figure out, because as I was advancing the, um, the, the city disc, it would go from white to red, and it, there didn't seem to be any kind of, like, rhyme or reason to why, why it was changing. Um, so I actually had to go to Longa's website. I should have known this, but... That actually is a daylight savings time indicator. So any any of those cities or time zones that observes daylight savings time, that indicator turns red. And for any city or time zone that does not observe daylight savings time, it is white. So that is that is a problem with world timers and anything that offers you a city disc like this, is that it's not always the same relationship because my. Uh, I have family that lives in South Africa, mm -hmm. and half of the year we are six hours difference, yeah. and the other half of the year we are seven hours difference. Doesn't Arizona not not observe daylight savings? Well, there are states like that. There's, right. I think, half of Indiana actually, because I have a <laughs> friend who lives in Indiana, and at one point he was living in a time zone and working in the other time zone, even though he's in the same state. Because apparently there's a line down the middle of that state with who observes and who doesn't. So was sometimes. He, or some part of the year he was two hours different from where he worked and others he was one hour different? No, it would be, sometimes they were the same oh, and then okay. sometimes they it was one hour okay, different. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, but that, that that's just a completely crazy, I mean, no one no one necessarily was like crying out for that um, that functionality. You know, leave it to Longa to, to just go ahead and do that. Yeah. And I honestly, like, I don't even know how you engineer that the amount of work that it must have taken just to solve that very seemingly simple right. problem. It's definitely is... more parts than the original, oh, man, for sure. Crazy. There's got to be more parts than this one. Um, and it's it's a stunner. I mean, you get not only the engraved balance cock, but mm -hmm. they also engraved part of that dual-time mechanism that you can see on the back, um, white gold case. Beautiful. Yeah. It's lovely. I mean, no I, I really like the, the rose gold uh, with the cream dial. I, you mm -hmm. know, I just think that's like just such a classic look. But this, this white so gold black dial is beautiful you, If you well. don't need to know the daylight savings time thing mm -hmm. and you want to go for the old one, there's a rose gold gray dial yes. version of that that was like yep. a boutique only special that was really lovely that's stunning yeah we yeah. have the perpetual right now in rose gold with the gray dial and it's right the same thing yeah it's that new longer really one really nice. really, that's really, a really lovely nice. watch that's a great combo yeah. yeah um yeah all right cool we like that one uh where are we going next hmm. what do you think? there's there's so many places to go we've gone up market so why don't we talk a little bit about um the value proposition sure. now yeah. um so we haven't talked about these guys much. Actually, you know what? So someone, I think it was last week, asked us. We were doing indies, and they asked us, um, why didn't we have any any Asian or Japanese indies? Oh, yeah. And we just, you know, we said we just don't sell a lot of them. We don't, you know, it's just not, we're not honestly super knowledgeable about them, and we like to make sure that we know, you know, what we're selling um, somewhat, you know. <laughs> Take that with a grain of salt. But we uh, try. We, we try. try it's so This store is a really different environment than if you're working at an ad where you have like the four or five brands that you deal with and you can really study that catalog mm -hmm. and know it well and you're only selling the current models of, exactly of those several brands whereas yeah. we are selling 
how many two dozen brands and we're selling every model they've ever made basically yep. so and we still like you know i've been doing this for eight years justin's been here for seven we still get offered stuff where we're like whoa i've never seen yeah. that before or yeah. i didn't even know that existed like the the breadth of these catalogs is so big and the mm -hmm. time frame is so huge that it's like we're always learning new yeah, stuff so um so we have some grand psycho all right, so let me pull up the details because, like we said, we're not. We actually only in the past maybe two, three years started selling or started, you know, taking Grand Seiko. Um, yep. This is the SBGE 275G. It's from the Sport Collection. It's the Spring Drive GMT. Um, this, you know, Grand Seiko, I feel like, you know, is best known for their dials. This one has that classic oh, kind of no exception here. snowflakey, yeah. you know, incredibly textured dial. Um, I feel like the spring drive though is also because if you um, there's a lot of debate over like is this a true mechanical movement because this is a bit of a well, but it's a hybrid there's no balance wheel yeah but it's it's not battery it's not quartz driven like, but there's a quartz crystal in here <laughs> thanks Rob <laughs> hey that's what I'm here for I'm here for the discourse if you're not if you're not here for the discourse at this point what are you what are you watching us for um the there is no balance in this so if you flip this over and you look at the movement which is really well done mm -hmm. um no complaints there uh there is no balance wheel oscillating back and forth this uses a quartz crystal as its regulating mechanism and because of that the spring drive is known for being silky smooth and i'm gonna try and hold as still as i can so that maybe you can see that but the sweep on this thing is is unreal you know you don't get if you look at a standard watch, mm -hmm. um, and especially if it's an older thing where it's like an 18.6 I mean, BPM, you will see... Look how herky-jerky the, you know, the... Or sorry, BPH. The, I say BPM because I'm a musician. Uh, um, the seconds, you know, even just on my AP, you know, it's, it's you know, if you're kind of standing way back, yeah, it's smooth-ish, but if you really watch it, you know, it's kind of stop-start, you know, it's not... It's not silky smooth like you were saying about the yeah. about the Grand Seiko. The best example is the old school big pilot. If you look oh, yeah. at that old school big pilot, it um, you can really see it because that second hand is like two feet long. So you can really see the like yeah. as that goes around. So the spring drive, you don't get that. And if you put this on it, <coughs> excuse me, if you put this on a testing machine, it won't say, read it. The first time that we got it, you know, so every piece that comes in, you know, Excuse we, you know, we have a, a, a couple of witchy machines, you know, to test them to see how everything is running, you know, whether it needs service, all, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, the first couple of times that someone put, you know, one of, the, one of these spring drives on the, uh, on, on one of the testing machines. It must you know, be broken. Yeah. Yeah. This, this must, yeah, exactly. So a lot of people don't know. How does a witchy machine work, Justin? Oh, I don't know, Rob. You explain it, to me, but... It listens to the movement. When you put a watch on a witchy machine, a testing machine, it's actually listening to the movement and it's it's getting information about the rate and the amplitude and the beat error from the sound of that say, balance wheel and the, the ticking rate and everything. And it's it's really an amazing bit of technology. Well, but spot there, pal, set me up for, uh, this you know, set me, really set me up for success there. This makes no sound, so you can't <laughs> test it on the machine. Um, but they also like they're tremendously accurate because of the. Um, the hybrid nature of the movement. Mm -hmm. um, so it is, it's a stunning watch. It's a little bit big for me. Yeah, so my, my complaint is usually, you know, <coughs> Sorry. I, I, I prefer the, I think it's the, what is it, the classic collection. You know, it's a slimmer case. It's on a strap. I don't love... Elegance. Elegance, thank you. Elegance I don't, I don't, I don't love these sport pieces that are on the bracelets. The bracelets just don't feel, you know, when you're, if you're used to wearing, you know, like a sub or something like that, they just don't feel as substantial. They just don't feel as well made. But, and that's, that... By no means are they not well made. Like Grand Seiko, the the level of craftsmanship that goes into you know their move, everything from their movements to their dials to their cases, like they're they're beautifully made. And Everybody just, out there who reason, says that like the, the quality is really really high, you it can't is. argue with them. You no. really can't because no, no. objectively it is a super duper well made watch. Right, right. Um, There's just some kind of intangible for me that when I put it on, it doesn't. I don't know. It doesn't do it, but they're they're. Again, for the price, I believe this one is like seven grand, maybe a little bit under. Yeah. Um, it's a crazy amount of watch and, you know, a, a, yeah. a ridiculous level of craftsmanship and finishing that goes into it. Um, well, for, I mean, the dial alone. Yeah. Like, to get a dial like that on a 7K watch is yeah. really good. And then 
to have the cool movement technology to have this is a true gmt so you've got a 24 hour bezel and they even did the 24 hour the scale on the rehot yeah. as well which is kind of interesting um they do a good job i i have to admit as much as it's like it's not for me because of the size it does get on the thick side but it also like the way they curve the lugs and the way they do the geometry on the case it still fits really nicely on the wrist. And even with this level of thickness, I could get this under the cuff if the bracelet was sized for me. So really nice details, really well done, beautiful shades of blue. I mean, it's, I think a, if, it's if, a good watch. Yeah, and I, honestly, I think if you're, you know, you've, you've, you've had it all, you know, you're, you're looking for, for an alternative to say like an Omega or something, like, yeah, this is perfect, you know? This, this I wish there was a way to do piece. the GMT other than the crown, but I guess that's yeah. the same as a Rolex, right? Mm -hmm. And it's the same exact functionality yeah, as a Rolex. Spring. You can go back and forth. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a good watch. And it's just, it's a question of whether or not you connect with it, you know, because there's no faults of technology yeah. or craftsmanship yeah. or manufacturing here, for sure. Yep. Um, this is a cool one, actually. I like it the is. white and the blue. It I do, too. really good. Visu yeah, aesthetically, it's, it, it has a really nice look to it. Yeah. So, from the steel... I think you got to stick with Mr. Panner. I mean, this. I'll, I'll let you handle this one. This is this is kind of this is this is your bag. Here. This is this is my bag, yeah, baby. Exactly. So we. Uh, I've been trying to get a Panerai on the stream for a while now, um, <laughs> because everybody should like Panerai. <laughs> now, Panerai is an interesting one, right? Because they're also very polarizing. Like we're talking about Grand Seiko, and I think especially if you if you are uh, brave enough to go onto the internet and read the forums and things like that, you'll see both. You'll see everybody who tries to say that Grand Seiko is the watch that will bring peace into the world yeah, and why would you buy a Rolex and yada, yada, yada. And then you have, you know, people who are like, yeah, but they're so perfect, there's no soul there and all of that. And, you know, whichever camp you fall into, um, Panerai is very much the same thing. I think there is a lot of, um, you either love it or you hate it. There's, there's not many people who are yeah. kind of agnostic in the Panerai world. Um, I mean, I've always liked it. It's always been, it, you know... So, I would say my guilty pleasure, but I take no. I would no say there's no guilt there. Pleasure. Yeah, we no. don't shame. Um, <laughs> the I don't know. I I, I agree. To, I agree with you to a point um, about you either love it or you hate it. I will say so. I love the classic Panerai aesthetic. So I like you know the the big beefy sand you know case with a sandwich dial. Um, well, you got you got beef right here. Don't worry. <laughs> well, you got plenty of this beef there. This is beefy. So, this is an interesting piece, you know, this this goes well with, um, you know, the theme, the, the, the dual time GMT theme this week. If I was going to buy a Panerai, I'm not buying a complicated Panerai. I am, I am a huge advocate for buying, whether it's in watches or, you know, a, a restaurant or, you know, what, whatever that a company makes, buy the best version, like buy, buy what they do best. Sorry, that's what I was trying to say. And I think complications is not what Panerai does best. I think they do, you know, super legible, um, you know, uh, military-inspired dive watches is is really what they're known for, what they do best. So I really think that's, you go with a more simple piece, but, you know, this this is a very interesting watch. So this, I usually would agree with you and say that complicated Panerai is not for me because nine times out of ten it's not. This is probably the coolest complicated Panerai, in my opinion. Really? So we have, in this watch, we have the second time zone feature, which, again, it can be hidden. Um, and I, I like that when you can actually kind of disguise it. So mm -hmm. this hand here is your second time zone hand. And this one is a standard dual time. It's not a GMT. You have that, and you have an AM-PM indicator that you can't see right now because it's black with the dial. But this will go to the same kind of greenish loomy hin uh, tinge as the rest of the dial here when it's in a second time zone. Um, this also adds a mono pusher chronograph to it. So this button over here at about uh, eight o'clock does a mono pusher chronograph, which is super cool. It also has the best crystal in the world on it because it's this monstrous domed crystal that gives you all these great vintage style distortions at the side. Um, they made this watch in steel, which we have here. They made it in titanium with a uh, tobacco brown dial, and they made it in ceramic with a black dial, which is a, a very cool piece if you're into that whole kind of military thing. Um, 1950s case, so you get a little bit more contour here on the sides. It's not the super squared luminor case. You still do get the crown guard, and you get the polished bezel with the brushed surfaces. So 
I like this. NYC Watch I like uh, it. or sorry, NYC Watch Dude says the Pan 574 is where it's at. I agree. So 42 mil radio mirror, 11 millimeters thick, just classic, classic Panerai. When I think Panerai, that's the kind of stuff that I think of. Uh, yep. I agree with you, Rob. This is this is interesting. I don't know if I'm looking for interesting when I'm buying Panerai. But linear power reserve down at the bottom. Eight days of power. Eight days. You wind it once a week. When that power reserve is working. It works fine. It was completely zeroed out. <laughs> I've seen so many that don't work right. But this one works great, people. This one is this one is functioning <laughs> properly. Uh, it, is, it is going up. It is, look, it it, is going it down. It went up. It went up. Yeah. It was all the way down. Um, you're right. I mean, the... The um, geometry of the case, you know, they do a good job of kind of hiding the heft, um, yeah. you know, kind of making oh, it I didn't show the shrink movement. a little bit. The movement is actually quite nice. I didn't show the movement. It's got a beautiful manual wind movement, and and they made sure that you could see the column wheel. There's yeah. a column window right there. <laughs> That's the technical term. Yeah, but, I mean, and it's it's standard Panerai finishing, right? Yeah. I mean, you're not you're not looking at, uh, at a paddock or a Jorn here yeah. or Longa. Um, but it's really well done. It is an in-house caliber, which is very cool. Um, I love that they made it manual because if they made it automatic, it'd be, you know, chungus humongous. It'd be so yeah. thick. Yeah. It wouldn't work. Um, but I like this watch. This is actually, it's, it's funny to me that these are now kind of sub 10 K. We're, we're, we're at 9,900. Yeah. So. And, and this is complete too. This is complete yeah, this box is nice papers, cool toys, all that nice stuff. Strap, um, it's this is a great watch for under 10 K because this is a complicated watch. You have the push buttons for the strap changes, which makes that super easy. Cause you know, if you're a Panerai guy, you want to have a ton of <laughs> funky straps and things no, you're like right. that. I mean, but, I, I think the rubber does this no favors. I think on a nice, you know, just a dark calf skin or something, or yeah. even, you know, I've seen those shell like, Shell, this but looks so good on shell. even better. Um, those kind of canvasy ones, you know, mm -hmm. the, the leather back canvas straps. Oh, like straps, a green, the green, a khaki green canvas amazing, on that would be amazing. with the lumen stuff. And it is a sandwich dial. This is, you're not going to see it in the camera, but this is a sandwich dial, which mm -hmm. is super cool. So uh, an interesting way of blending, you know, we had a dual time with the alarm. Mm -hmm. Now we've got a dual time with the chrono, which mm -hmm. obviously Long, you do also yeah. see on uh, on paddocks and things like that as well. So we're going to go to the complete, complete opposite end of the spectrum we now. We can put them, put next, them next to each, each other. other. Actually be very and say that, like, here, I'm going to take my ring off so that I don't scratch anything. Uh, so we're going to go, this is the Cartier Tanka V, the dual time. Um, this is a piece from the Privé collection. Um, I honestly don't know which year when this, the when this originally came out. And the smallest on the table. Legit. Legit. I mean, it's kind of funny. Like, this is, you know, the Panerai is you and the Cartier is me, buddy. Uh, hey, I, I, I'd go both ways no, here. Whoa, I would do there. the Cartier. Right. Okay, well, I Rob's, would, yeah. you, heard it, you heard it for here first. Rob's going both ways. Um, the, so the Cartier Tank of V, uh, yellow gold, kind of a classic Tank of V case. Oh, yeah. Uh, 28 by 32, seven and a half millimeters thick. You know, um, again, this was a part of the, the, the CPCP collection. So, I can't, remember, I can't remember years. I want to say it was like 98 through 2008 or Original like CPCP. Original CPCP. Um, they have brought back the Privé right, but with a lot of the new releases, but this is not that. This, this is, is old CPCP. school. So, what is the Tank of E? What is Can the you, Tank like, of E? What, what makes it a Tank of E for, for the viewers at home who are playing the home game? What's the shape of the case, bro? Right, it, and these little screws, right? It yes. Something so you to do with the, 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 the screwed-in bezel. Yes, the four screws on the bezel that, yeah. that secure the, the bezel. Not your standard tank shape. Not your standard. It's a little thicker. It's a little larger. Um, but so anyways, inspired, you know, all the CPCP pieces were inspired by pieces from Cartier's, you know, back catalog. This was inspired by a piece from 1931. Um, wow. Yeah. I mean, it's... It has the classic, you know, guilloche case with that um, those central rosettes, which is kind of the the signature of those again of those CPCP pieces. Um, you know, the the interesting thing about this is that you you get those two dials, and they're both powered by there's one movement, there's one crown. You set them both from that that one crown, and they're both powered off of that that single movement um single manual wind movement yep. so i think it's like you pull the first one out yeah and then i there can in the first position i can move the bottom hour hand individually so a very standard gmt kind of function there are cartier dual times that have two movements in them. there are 
and you get two crowns, and you can just set them however you want, completely I want to say independent. Sintray dual time. Um, I think it is a Sintray. I think you're right. That had two movements, um, but yeah. So this this is a Piaget based movement, I believe, um, and it's gorgeous. I mean, the decoration on it is incredible. Let's see if you can get it there. Yeah, and I love a square movement. I am yeah. I am always there for a square movement because it anytime, looks great. I was gonna say any time you know you have a rectangular or you know funky shaped case and you flip it over and you have a display back and the you don't have a giant spacer around a round movement you know what i mean like it's it makes me very happy you know yeah. it's just like the cabaret that's you know. exactly what i was thinking of too like Perfect. the best probably the best square movement of all time Agreed. is that cabaret sure. movement yeah. um what a stunner that yeah. is yeah. but this to me is so cool because it's like you get cartier paris on the dial Yes, which, which is, again is another which signature. Which is so of the lovely. Collection. Right, you only get that on the yep. old school Privé where it says Cartier Paris. Yep. Um, and and just this whole idea of like two tiny little sets of hands and the way the hour markers are done, it's just, it's so kind of eccentric and mm-hmm. weird. Yeah, I it's love totally it. totally out there. I absolutely love it. I love it. Well. But all the usual Cartier trappings as well. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, yeah, you get yeah. the cabochon crown, you know, everything. Really Why hasn't anybody nice. bought this yet? I don't know. What are you We're, people doing? Uh, 24900 Hit us up. It's really nice. Ah, for like real good Cartier. It's funny because we, we've been talking about it the past couple uh, days about how Cartier is such an interesting case because they make some of the like most beautiful watches we've ever seen mm. and then some of the like weirdest stuff at the same time. And by weird, he means terrible. Like I, uh, I was trying to be uh, <laughs> delicate. How do you say? But it's true. I mean, so Cartier will make the the most incredible classic, you know, just like even, even you know, avant-garde crash, you know, crazy Benoit stuff that's just absolutely beautiful. Mm. And then they'll make something ridiculous like, you know, some massive Ballon Blue with, you know, weird diamonds and like, you know, I don't know, all kinds of yeah, crazy applications and stuff. If I you're know, looking, I know. if that's your bag, we've got you. Mystery again, dial again. diamonds. Whatever floats well, your boat. And that like that Santos we have with the, uh, it's like marble I or see, something, I like right? that piece. I like that one. Like, but it's weird. It's really weird. It's you weird. look at it, and it's like, what's going on? And then you realize the Roman numerals are made out of stone. Yeah, and you're they're like, made out wow, of like marble. This it's is ridiculous. Cool. Yeah, it's like legit, like, you know, Roman statue marble. Yeah, exactly. It's cool. It is super cool. Um, Cartier, man. Cartier. Anything, so, people? Not really. Guys, is there anything, any any GMTs, any dual times that we didn't cover? Craig, anything over there that uh, anybody like Jimmy G says, let's go. Says what? Let's go. Okay, we're going. Oh, Let's actually, go. you know what? For we're every going. for everybody that hung around and is it is still here at minute fifty three, we have something very special to share. Oh yeah, with you. we buried the lead. Hold on a second. We, we buried probably, the lead. We, 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 we probably should have said something about this, but um, we didn't. Special appearance. So, I'm glad you remembered. I almost I forgot. Almost totally forgot too. Um, you may you may have seen some some high profile celebrities wearing these wearing this. Um. One Benjamin Clymer, I believe, has been spotted wearing one. Uh, Tom Brady over the summer. Uh, so we actually are super lucky that we have a uh, the brand new Le Monde Daytona. So let's see if I can get this uh, this wrap off. Leave it. We can show, it. It. Okay, here. It doesn't show it to the camera. Tell me that. So, anyways, introduced earlier this year. This is the like I said, the Le Monde Daytona. Um, so introduced, in, you know, in commemoration of the the hundredth anniversary of the twenty four hours of Le Mans earlier this year. Um, it's been like the slowest rollout of all time for Rolex for this piece. They're like, it's almost like this like mythic being at this point where, you know, everybody, you know, like, you know, spots one somewhere and then, you know, there's like rumors of them on the market, you know, and then all of a sudden they, they, they disappear. So we actually were, we're super lucky to get one. It's actually already sold, um, to a really good friend of the, of the company, um, but see if you can kind of show off some of those, like the the, the distinct, you know, this, the the really um, you know, distinguishing characteristics of the piece. So you have again, it's it's a white gold Daytona. Um, it's that new style ceramic bezel with the white gold surround. And then if you look, if we can get it in those sub, ah, there we go. So on the on the bezel on the um, the tachymeter uh, you know scale, you have the the hundred is actually in red, you Down know, for here. the hundredth anniversary. Then you get you know six two three nine Newman style. Um, uh, font in the in the in the sub dials, so you ah, we're out of focus. 
trying to get it. You got to stay like right there. You go right. It's so hard because the two cameras aren't perfectly lined up. I'm sorry, internet people. It has yeah, it has the exotic sub dials from the original Paul Newman's. Yes. Um, where you get the dots on a stick, uh, for the markers, and you get the fonts and everything. Yeah. Uh, to me, the most interesting thing is the movement. I was going to say. Yeah, is making this a 24-hour counter. And yeah. I think that's why the retail on this is so much higher yeah. than your standard white gold Daytona. Because standard white gold Daytona is like 40-ish. Right around there, yeah, right? 43. And 44. this is like 60 or yeah. 70 or something. And it's like, wait, why is it so expensive? And it's it does have a display back on it, which, you know, you decide... Um, sorry, it's, we, I mean, did, we didn't get you know, the I mean, wrap off the Ro- class. But. Ro- Rolex d- doesn't do limited editions. They don't do commemorative pieces. So, you know, and this technically is not a limited edition. It, You know, Rolex has not said that this is going to be... That know, is the million-dollar question. How long are they going to make this watch? It actually be the million-dollar question. You know, we've... I mean, personally, I hope that they... They make it for a year and then they discontinue it. You this know, should be done at the end of twenty. This should be done at the end of twenty three. In my opinion, it's it's a special piece. It's a commemorative piece that that actually you know commemorates a historic event that 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 Rolex has had a long affiliation yeah. with. Um, and it's just you know, there's no need to you know to to milk this and and and, and to make this for right. longer than they need to. You know, Rolex is going to sell every single Daytona that they make no matter what model they're doing. So. You know, throw us a bone, throw, throw collectors a bone, and make this actually special. Um, but it's it's a piece that you know when you when we saw photos when it was introduced and you saw it on people's wrists, we're like, okay, yeah, it looks really nice. You know, I I think that's going to be cool. You know, it seems like the differences are very subtle. And then we got it, and damn, it is. It's the Daytona all, everybody wants. It's the Daytona that they always should have. Well, made. for me, I prefer this in this color. I've yeah. always liked the black with I the white. Always. A lot of people would probably want this in the plain Daytona. No, um, no. People complain that this is illegible, but I don't. I don't. I totally disagree. Like, also, who cares? Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. I, legibility for me is so far down the road. It's just. Um, it's just. It's so special. Yeah. It's. It's. It's way more than the sum of its parts. If you just. If you just list off what the diff. You know the 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 differences. It's like okay, whatever. And it's it's really funny actually. I had an interesting conversation it's today. Actually, just put it. Uh, actually, here, put this through the. Uh, We'll keep it in the camera, <coughs> but just so we're not, you know, um, really seeing it. The, uh, so I was having a really interesting conversation with uh, Inverse Panda Rocks. Yeah, you and me both. Mm. <laughs> um, so the, um, I was having an interesting conversation with our colleague, David, and I was talking about this watch. Because ultimately, if I had $300,000 to watch mm-hmm. right now, I'd buy it. Okay, so uh, just sit there. Very easy to do. We can do the start. And, and, the and Oh, we lost that camera. Okay, never mind. Sorry, YouTube. Never mind, never mind. Uh, and, and David said to me, he said, you know, but think about the guy who has Newman's, mm-hmm. who owns a couple of Newman's, and is like, I am a Paul Newman collector. Yeah. And it's like, then you need this watch. Yeah. Because this is like, oh, it's like the end of the lineage. Mm-hmm. And I'm guessing it's going to be the end, because Rolex doesn't usually bring stuff back from the dead. No. You know, they, you never see that. So... This could be like the final Newman kind of thing, you know, like when Jordan did the final resonance. <laughs> like, but yeah, you know, I know can, we're all can, singing Europe in can, our head, but can, um, <laughs> can, you ima- can you imagine this say in you know 10, 15, 20, 30 years if they do discontinue it after a year? It has a unique movement, which like you know, every Rolex cl- nerd collector, you know, oh, vintage yeah. collectors, like you know, their heads are exploding right now thinking about it to, to have a Rolex, one model. That has a unique movement that does not get used in other in other applications. Yeah. With all of these other really interesting callbacks, you know, to, to mm-hmm. vintage pieces, um, you know, and the precious metal and the display back, like it's it has the it has all the ingredients to be like the most like classic classic of all time. You know what I mean? Looking towards and the also future. the most unique. Yes. Like it has this ability to be a truly unique reference yeah. in a sea of similarity. Well. From Rolex, who is known for just making exactly. making the same model for yeah. you know decades, so it uh, ain't broke. <laughs> I know exactly. <laughs> but on so bomb show. <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> thank you guys for sticking around. We we probably should have like told people that we were, we were hopefully gonna pull that out. But yeah. um, if you guys saw it, congrats, cool piece. We're really excited about it. Um, hopefully, we'll have some more content, you know, specifically about this um, this exact watch uh, coming soon. But. Um, yeah, let us know what else you guys want to see. Actually, we got some great comments, you know, about other 
um, kind of themes that people would love to see for you know future yeah, we happy got some hours. Good ideas in the yeah, camp. so keep them coming. Let us know. Thank you guys for sticking around. We really appreciate you guys tuning in. And uh, if you have any other comments, you know where to find us. But uh, we'll see you guys next week at the same time. See you next week. See you later.